Hello everyone, and today I wanted to show off my HTPC, or a home theater personal computer. It's currently hidden behind here, and I use it to watch YouTube or Plex and stuff like that. Um, I've got it running... And Jack, is that Windows 10? Yes, it is. A desktop operating system for a home theater PC? It is. But it works all right. I mean, I've got these two controllers. You know? Well, what if we could make it run better? And we could get rid of that. I'm game. Now, there are other options like an Android box, but I've heard kind of some suspicious things about how the operating systems work. Um, this is what we know, and this is not the best thing right here when running Windows yeah. 10. Yeah, so what we're gonna be doing is we are going to another desktop operating system, granted, but we're gonna to go to Kubuntu, which is the KDE version or Plasma desktop version of Ubuntu. And we're gonna be able to customize it to where it feels a lot more native, a lot more like it's an actual home theater sort of setup. And and operating system. So it'll be a lot better than running a full desktop type operating system that's just not optimized for sitting back on the couch and pressing a few buttons. All right, Jack, so have you ever flashed a uh, USB stick for, for Linux? Uh, not for Linux, no. Okay, so we do have a 32 gig uh, thumb drive here. We want one that's got at least eight gigs, but this one's obviously got more. Um, and so we'll just stick that into our USB port. And so I've got Kubuntu right here, and we're gonna use a uh, program called Popsicle. <laughs> and this was actually created by System76. Uh, and so we're just going to find our ISO here by just choosing the image. And we're gonna go next, we're gonna choose our drive. It's that simple. And now we just wait. Awesome. So while it's flashing the thumb drive, let's talk about this for a second. The goal is to create a uh, media center as possible type experience and KDE is kind of the best option on Linux out of it uh, because KDE is very flexible. It uses what's called panels and we're able to take those panels, put them wherever we want on the screen. We can make them as large as we want. Uh, there's just so much flexibility and customization that we can do on KDE to make it that experience. All right, and the flash is complete. So we'll just close out Popsicle and we will, well, we'll go ahead and hit safely remove just in case <laughs> the device can now be safely removed. So we're good to go. All right, so with it plugged into the machine, of course, Windows is not liking that it was ever inside of a Linux machine. And uh, we're just gonna hit cancel. <laughs> so let's go ahead and restart this computer. Do you remember which one is to get into the BIOS? The Probably F8 is usually. The technique so I use function. is uh, this right here. Come on. Was that the name of the... Is it Fox? Okay. One eternity later. All right, so like we said, this computer only has USB 2.0, so this is gonna be a little slow, but it should be fine. So, uh, you've never installed Kubuntu before, no. so I'll walk you through it. Uh, go and click on Install Kubuntu. So obviously you're using a, uh English keyboard, US English keyboard, so continue. Software, uh, let's do a normal installation, but uh, uncheck uh, download updates while installing, but install third-party software for Wi-Fi and all the other drivers. Do you have this connected through uh, Ethernet? Uh, yes. Okay, otherwise we would have to do a wireless, uh, a Wi-Fi uh, connection. Yeah, it's kind of So that would be another step that we'd have to do normally. Uh, use entire disk, yep, and just hit install now. So it's, it's just gonna take it to that Kingston drive and it's just gonna wipe the whole thing, reformat, and make it uh, Kubuntu, yes, continue. Okay, so, okay, it picks up the time zone correctly, and go ahead and type in the username details and stuff. Uh, do I need a password? So, you do need a password, but you can make it log in automatically if you wanted to. You'll never guess what this is. What this is. <laughs> we're not getting it to install the updates while we're doing it. I've had a couple of issues with that before. Like I've I've done the install, it goes to install the updates and stuff like that. It might crash while I'm trying to install the updates. It's just better to go ahead and get the install done because you can always update later. Software wise, obviously we're gonna get you Opera. You like Opera. Spotify for you. Minuet Music Education. Mm -hmm. Can I learn to play the piano in here? Yeah, yeah, you could, you could. All right, so now the installation is complete and hit restart now. And so yeah. as, it's, as it's winding down, we're gonna to want to, yep, remove the installation medium and then hit enter. Hey! All right, so there we go. We have a fresh Kubuntu installation. And yeah, if you don't mind, I guess we could, I could take over from here. Yeah, go ahead. And we'll go into some of the first things we wanna do here. Now, you don't have an NVIDIA card in here, nothing like that, so we don't need to worry about installing NVIDIA drivers. But I will say this, it is dead simple on, on uh, Ubuntu-based operating systems. You literally just go into the settings, then you go to additional drivers, and hit install. 
Wow. It's, it's fantastic. Um, so we do have uh, the desire of Kubuntu to do updates. <sighs> we need to do that. <laughs> Here's the thing, I you could probably get away without it, but I mean, it's best practice after a fresh install to just go ahead and do all the updates. Okay. Yeah, so this is Discover. The Discover app is KDE's um, app store, if you will, like Apple App Store. Uh, it's also where you uh, maintain your updates and stuff like that. So you saw in the corner, actually you can see it right there still, um, there's this little icon. Yeah. That's indicating that you need updates. Okay. Um, and one thing that's really cool is all of your software is updated through here, not just the operating system. And then if you ever want to uh, find other applications, you can go over here to the application tab and you can search them all in here. But I'm gonna be showing you something that's kind of new to Linux overall. Um, I mean, it's not like brand new or anything, but it's, it's, it's taking over the world of uh, Linux app distribution. All right, so we have done an update and we will do, of course, the gratuitous uh, restart. Now, we can actually get into installing software, doing some customization, things like that. So let's just go ahead and get this optimized and set up for what we want. The new application system that I'm talking about uh, is called Flatpak. And flat packs are a containerized application that basically allow you to create one version of an application and use it across all Linux. Because it used to be, you know, uh, you create uh, an application for Ubuntu, it's not gonna work on Fedora. So we go to flathub.org. This is basically a online app store just full of all the different apps that you wanna use uh, for Linux. So the first thing is we're gonna wanna set up Flathub and then we're gonna to go to Ubuntu. And Flatpak is already installed, I believe. Now, this is the only bit of command line we're gonna to have to touch. Okay. So, there we go. There we go. Yeah, I do wish that they had just like a little GUI installer, but all you gotta do is copy these um, commands and paste them in. And like I said, you can do all of this. After this initial piece is set up, you can do all of this without um, ever going to their face. Er, yeah, ever going. And just restart? Yep. Okay, so we've enabled Flatpak. And so now if we open Discover, our software center, um, we're gonna be able to go in here and say we search for Blender. I don't know if I want that on here. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be fine without it. Well, yeah, it's supposed to show all the apps in here. Anyway, I'll show you how to just do it from the web browser. Because again, we're gonna install like, what, three apps and it's never gonna get touched again. Say we wanna install, uh, oh, we said Spotify, right? Yeah. So we'll find Spotify. So there's a Spotify app. And we can go click install and see this uh, application, uh, this little yeah. file it downloaded. So we click on that and we'll open it up in Discover. Oh, there we go, Discover Flatpak backend. That's what we needed. So now it integrates it to where we can use Discover for all this. This is my password. So now, if we were to search, say, Spotify, there it is. But we can change the source. You know, it's very possible. We might need to do a restart of the computer in order to see it in here. Third restart? Well, yeah. Okay. So anyway, we'll click on it again. Now we can open it up and Discover. And there it is. Okay, sources. Oh yeah, so you go up to sources and you can change it. But, so I don't, we, we might still need to do a restart in order to see it when we do a search or something. Anyway, now we can hit install. So now we've got Spotify. Now let's click on Plex and we'll open and discover. All right, so we'll install that. So you can also go to, um, this is kind of the cool thing. So you can do things, a lot of things with Flatpak without having consequences really. So you can go into the beta channel and oh. then it will change it to the beta version of the app and everything. And if it's too buggy, you don't like it, you can kind of switch it right back to the to the stable version. Let's start doing the optimizations. Uh, this is kind of the important part. Let's start doing the optimizations that we're talking about to actually make this a theater PC. Okay. Now we're about to see the flexibility of KDE. So we're gonna enter edit mode. And now we can move this. What we can do is grab here and we can move this pretty much anywhere we want. So the application launcher, we can actually show an alternative one. So this one's really cool, application dashboard. If we switch, let's exit out of this. Application dashboard is like a full screen deal. And so we could favorite all of your favorites. And I think we can make it launch to this dashboard. But wait a second. Let's delete the panel altogether. Let's go into adding widgets. 
Oh, you can add like a big old clock? Yeah, okay. Oh. So this is where we start seeing the cool stuff. So do you want a digital clock or? I like analog. You like analog? So let's throw the analog clock onto there. Community design. And then, to your system monitor, icons only task manager. Oh, okay, I see. So here we go. This is where it's gonna be really cool. So, we can keep the menu and everything up here, so let's do this. So we'll switch this back to the, well, do you want the full screen one or do you want the normal window style? No one does window style, it's fine. Go back into normal edit mode, and then we will uh, show alternatives and application launcher. And then we will also, we'll get rid of uh, icons only task manager right there. Um, let's add a spacer. And we'll move it. One eternity later. Okay, so let's choose a global theme though. Do you want dark mode? Yeah. Let's go breeze dark. And now everything's dark mode. There, so these are, okay, so unpin from task manager. Let's unpin from task manager. If we come over here, there we go. Okay, okay so we can just drag and drop it. Whoops, didn't even open up Firefox. All right, and so now when you boot up your machine, all you gotta do is just go to Brave, Plex, whatever you wanna do. All right, so now we have you a home theater PC that's got your three apps that you're gonna be using and a nice big clock, and so it can sit on the home screen if you're ever just not wanting to use it. But what do you think? I like it so far. I mean, hey, this off the bat is a lot easier, and I've got more. I'm glad I'm using the actual apps instead of the right know, because so. because you're using like these uh, these devices and everything to control your home theater PC, which is a lot to do when you're working with a desktop operating system and stuff like that. So hopefully this makes it a lot a lot easier for you. So that wraps up this video. Do you guys have a better option than this? You know, let us know in the comments below if you've got if you've ever done a PC like this. Uh, and you've got a better operating system or better workflow, definitely let us know. Or if you just think we're idiots, let us know that too. Uh, thank you so much for watching. No plan. Until next time. What about the uh, Ubuntu? Have you have you gotten uh, Ubuntu? I have not tried Ubuntu. I want I want to see what Ubuntu is. <laughs> it, as far as I can tell, that is the dumbest. <laughs> I wish distribution. it had actual support. I would have I would have gotten it if it had actual support. If you want to, if you want to waste. 15 minutes of your life. Google Ubuntu.